for you. Uh, and so it just gave you maybe a little bit of a head start in this. And I had some friends at, at a fabrication shop at work that helped a lot, yes. <laughs> Good. Well, having, having a fabrication shop never hurts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so tell us, uh, tell us about your van, first off. Yeah, got a uh, ProMaster 350 um, van, and uh, it's the biggest one they make. As uh, far as on a one-ton chassis, and uh, and I got it with two slide outs so that I can add a, or two slide in doors so that I can add a slide out on the one side. And I just went overboard and went crazy and let my imagination go a little wild. <laughs> and, and folks, everything you could want in a van is in this van. I would say. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, so, are you full time now? Not yet, but I'm going to be. And uh, I've talked to you enough to know that your bosses uh, value you so much they won't let you go. They've almost got you tied and chained there. Almost. Almost. They're paying him too well to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the way it works. And that's kind of hard to turn down. Uh, but uh, are you planning on going full time? Yes. At some point? I do, yes. Especially the first part of my retirement, I want to. And so when travel. you built the van, you built it towards being full-time. Full-time and retiring and stop working, yes. Right, living in it. Um, well, rather than uh, just talk about it, let's go look at it. Okay. Let's just go take a look around. Uh, and we'll want to start on the outside at the slide because that's the most amazing thing, I think. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's do that. So here we over are over on the second, on the other side of the van, the, the driver's side, and you have a slide out. Was this a factory deal? Can you get this from the factory? Not the slide out, but no. you can get the, the door, the slider door mm -hmm. that allows you to have the opening. Right. Then you order the sliding kit, and then you just basically build a box, fasten it to the door, and then built a frame for the, for the track to mount to and then just wire it in. And so it is electric, it has an electric motor yep, somewhere? Electric motor, DC, or, you know, 12 volt DC, uh -huh. just like a regular slide out you see on an RV. And so it just slides in and out, and when it's closed, it just looks like every other van in the world. And and it, when we'll go inside, folks, and you'll see it provides a huge amount of space inside. It is amazing what, I think it only gives two feet, or maybe even less than that, like 18 inches, it's not very much, but it's, it's quite amazing how much space you get yeah, it inside. Yeah, it feels huge. Yes, it. I just think this is one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. So you said you ordered the sliding kit. Is this a kit you can order from the factory? Not from the factory, from but the... you can order it from the manufacturer that builds these slides. Oh, so it's oh, so the kit is like a slide out of a yeah, any old it's, RV. Yeah, it's what the, the, the RV manufacturers go to. And I wish I could remember the name of them, but I don't remember the name of it. But a little Googling around would oh, bring it yeah. up. Mm -hmm. And so then you have, so essentially it's the exact same thing, except you had to build the box out of an RV. Yeah, I just had to put it together yourself. And and perfect, perfect uh, camouflage, stealth. Oh. Just a door. It's just <laughs> yes. a door. It just opens and yes, closes. Yes, it does, yes. Yeah. Wow. Really, really brilliant, people, folks. I think uh, if you have the mechanical knowledge and ability, this is really a good way to go. Okay, so uh, can we go inside and take a look around? You bet. Let's do that. So, folks, now we're inside Kelly's really nice van. And, Kelly, would you mind showing us around some of the things you've made in here? Okay, well, here's the slide out, of it's course. It's obvious. That's the first thing you see is uh, that it's, and it's just a huge open area in here. Let me come back for you so you can see. So this is, you know, you don't, with this much stuff in here, you've got a huge area. Then I have drawers. They're made out of tin, and they're big. They go all the way back. Huge amount of storage oh. and organization right there. Yes. And then um, I only have one sink, but it's all I needed. And then your bed's in back. Bed's in back. It's up pretty high, but I wanted lots of room underneath. Right and uh, access through the drawers and I'm sure from the back door. Now everything to get under the bed I have to go through the back door. Okay, right. These are just, everything's drawers here right? and drawers here. 
This is basically my bedroom. This is the bathroom stuff. And that's the kitchen stuff. And you have a uh, you have a lot of solar. Yes, I got 780. I believe it's 780 watts somewhere around in there. On the roof. On the roof. And uh, you have an air conditioner. Yes, I have an air conditioner right above my bed. And that's kind of unique as well. Yes, it's a DC air conditioner with DC fans. Um, it's a split system. This is the evaporator, the condenser's on the roof, the compressor's down underneath, and um, puts out 6,000 BTUs. But it's being DC, it's also variable speed. So I can throttle it down to 3,000 BTUs. Um, if I'm really low on power, I have a shield where it blows the cool air down on top of me to where I can run it on low, pull the curtain, and I'm only cooling this half because it takes a lot of energy to cool a van. A lot. A lot. They're not, it's insulated, but it's not that insulated. Right. Um, not when these vans start, these metal skins of these vans are like a magnet when it comes to the heat. They do, and, and then they, just pass it all in and won't let it back out. No, it don't. And so you must have insulated pretty heavily. Not really. No? <laughs> Not as much as I would like, but you you value every little inch of the inside space that you don't want to take up. Right. That, so you, you just do what you can and hope for the best. Right. And uh, so to run an air conditioner, 780 watts is enough. But it takes a great big battery bank. What do you yes. have for a battery bank? I have 700 uh, amp hour lithium batteries. Wow, lithium batteries uh, hold more per amp hour than lead acid. So that's more like an equivalent of what in lead acid? I guess? Oh, I don't know. I'd guess a thousand. I'd, I'd guess that's more like a thousand in lead acid because they go deeper. Yes. That's yes. the big thing. I is can draw them down deeper and, and I don't always have to top them off. Right. In fact, um, I think I may understand that you don't, it's almost preferable that you don't always top them off. Right, because when I head up north in the winter, um, I can only get about three to four days before I have to find somewhere to charge or start driving and start charging my batteries because your solars just don't work very good with snow on top of them or or when it's foggy in the morning right. and usually a fog doesn't burn off until noon and then you only have till noon till four o'clock to charge and it just you just don't get the charging time you don't in the winter time so well we should tell people that you're in you're from idaho yes which is far north so you get less sun by the way yes and lots of clouds and yep so lots on. of clouds yep. and, and you are charging your lithium battery bank off of your uh, engine off my engine, yes, and I, I do it through a second inverter. I, I have an inverter tied to the, the batteries on the coach, mm -hmm. and then I go from the inverter to the main inverter, which is a 2,000, I think it's a 2,000 watt inverter. That's and, an it, inverter. And, it's, and it's also a charger, and it's right. the one that's set up to charge the lithium batteries right. how they want to be charged because they're different on on their charging parameters that is one uh, the main disadvantage of of lithium is that the charging is different yes it's not necessarily better or worse in fact in some ways it's better but you got to have your your controllers set up to charge lithium right yes. and so the learning curve is really the problem right now and the cost with lithium mm -hmm. so you're actually charging your lithium battery bank like you were plugged into a shore power off of a... I can, yeah. I can also plug in. You can, yes. Yes. But because you're running it from the engine to an inverter and charging the, the controller, the charger, and then from the charger to the lithiums, essentially even when you're running off the engine, you're running off 110. Yes. In a yes. roundabout way. In a roundabout way, yeah. And, and you've wasted some uh, conversion in t with the second inverter, but it just had to be that way. Right. Right, because you can't, yeah, the alternators on a vehicle are not designed to charge lithium batteries. And uh, I, another thing you've done that I'm, I'm really impressed with is your, uh, your, salt, your shower. Everyone wants to know how you go to the, how to take a shower and how you go to the bathroom. Okay, I have a composting toilet that I really don't compost in it. It's more of just a bucket and a, 
oh, what would you call it, a funnel? <laughs> a, a diverter. A diverter. That's the, their technical uh, name. Yeah, it's a sea head, but I, I don't have the bottle where most sea heads do. I just have it to where it drains out and it drains down the floor drain at the bottom of the toilet. And then... Um, and into your gray tank. And into my gray tank. And then when I want to take a shower, I just disconnect my toilet, pick it up, move it over there because it only takes two seconds to move it. And then this is my shower. I have a shower curtain here. It drapes all the way around. Here's the track. Tracks around. And this is all sloped from here to here. Everything slopes towards the drain. And so this is my, this is basically I'm standing in my shower pan. I'm noticing that we're not seeing a lot of your systems, so we don't see the water tank, we don't see the gray tank, we don't see the batteries. Where do you no, have them? The battery, they're all hanging underneath the van. I have um, two water tanks and one gray water tank, and and the battery bank is also underneath, hanging underneath the van. And then right next to my batteries are my um, inverter, so they're sitting side by side, but they're all down under the van, out of the way. And, and that was one of the advantages of the Ram ProMaster, right. is it has such a huge amount of space underneath. Yes, you can hang a lot of stuff underneath these vans. Right. And why do they have all that extra room? Well, it's a front wheel drive, so you don't you eliminate a drive line right down the center. Right. That you don't have to mess with anymore. It opens it up. And I have it um, heated also with the hydronic. My tanks are heated, so I keep my tanks at 55 degrees. I keep my lithium uh, bank at 70 degrees and because lithiums don't like to be charged uh, when it's freezing. So tell us about your hydronic system. Hydro, does I say uh, yeah, that right? It's a hydronic, yeah. Hydronic. It, it basically, I have a little boiler. It's, it's an S-bar heater and they use these for big trucks and big heavy equipment for like up in Alaska and Canada and what they do is they heat the the radiator water and instead of running the trucks 24 or 7 to keep them warm they use these little heaters to heat the coolant and cycles through the engine to keep the engines warm and their fuel system warm right and let's and say that that's spelled e-s-p-a-r if anyone yes. wants to look it up yes uh, and they're famous s-bar heaters are industrial equipment they're they're expensive but they're designed to last for a very, very long time. Yes, and they, uh, yeah, I've had no problems with mine. And then the nice thing is that they, um, they run off of, well, mine runs off gasoline. You can also get them to run off a of diesel, but this is a gasoline outfit. Mine runs off of gasoline, so it just pulls gas out of the tank. Doesn't use very much. It's, you hardly notice it. Right. And they're very efficient and, um, and then from there, and then I also have the floor is heated. I have in-floor radiant heat. And so and that wouldn't have a fan, which would draw power, but it does have a has pump. Has a pump, yeah. So I, have, I have these little pumps. You, you get them from, um, they're used a lot on um, hot water solar systems where they circulate water. Uh, and they're just 12-volt little pumps, and they use very little power. You know, these are things everyone always talks about doing, and you've done them all. Yes, I mean, and putting I, the slide in the yeah, and I uh, have no propane at all in this van. It's, right, it's all, and then my little cook cook stops are the butane stoves. Then I have a microwave, here. so you you can use your microwave. I got a microwave, and I got a fridge. This is a DC fridge. Everything in here is DC. I try to keep everything as DC everything as I can. Uh, sun saver or something? Yeah, I think that, so. That's what it like is. That. Yeah, they're the famous model in 12, uh, 12 volt. Well, fridges. yeah, and it's more set up. It's not really an RV fridge. Right. It's, so I did have uh, to. Yeah. I did have to add these. I this is what I use to keep my doors closed. Right. Now these are intended and, for off grid cabins. Yes. Yes, they're not really intended for RV use. They're intended for cabins and mobile homes. And, right. So you've really uh, was it an intention to be fossil fuel free because. You can be. Yes. You cannot well, build or burn any fossil fuels. I always felt, well, I don't know about fossil fuel, but I always felt I could build something that I did not have to go to an RV park and plug in. Right. Yeah, I did certainly not, done I, that. I did not want to plug in at all. I, I want to be able to go wherever and 
pull off the side of the road, park, and have everything I need to work. Well, you know, I, I've been on my forum for a long, long time, and all these ideas come up. Hot water heating and, and putting a slide in and lithium, and everyone talks about it, and few people do it. And you've done it all in one vehicle. Kelly, I just thank you so much for sharing your home with us and your brilliant ide ideas and, and creativity and, and knowledge in making them actually happen. It, it'll be a good example for a lot of people. This can be done. Uh, so folks, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you later.